If you've lived on this planet for a while, you know Earth's a little boring. I mean, the place is 4.5 billion years old, so why not go somewhere new? Today, you'll see five exoplanetary destinations that'll amaze you and absolutely make you want to stay here. Now, if you love the ocean or just like surfing, this next exoplanet might just be your next best vacation spot. I didn't say what kind of waves, you can't sue me. Are you not a big fan of spheres? Your dream vacation spot must be <laughs> made completely out of gas like our own neighbor Jupiter. This planet is so close to its own star, it's been pulled into an egg shape. And again, because of how close it sits to its sun, its temperature on its outside gassy layers sit around 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 2210 degrees Celsius. All while not so peacefully spiraling towards its own grave. That's when you and your travel destination will be eaten up by its own sun. Now this next planet named HD 189733b, or what I'll just call HDB, was discovered in 2006. And this planet shines this amazingly brilliant bright blue color that almost looks like water. But the reason why it's actually that blue color isn't because there's really any water on that planet. There's basically none. It's because you're looking- Extreme caution advised. ESA or the European Space Agency indicate HD 189733B as being uninhabitable. Reason given. Atmosphere is composed of hard silicate. Otherwise known as glass. I want to emphasize, everything you're looking at is just tiny pieces of small, razor-sharp glass. Now, all of this glass you're looking at is made of a thing called silicate. Now, what's silicate? Basically, it's what happens when four oxygen atoms attach themselves to a silicon atom. And this is silicon. And it's a metal, not silicone, that's a rubber, that's something different. I didn't know the difference for 11 years. And if you decided to land here, which, I mean, you can't really land because there's no land here, this is what would happen. It's basically like that one scene from the Avengers movies. Also, if you've liked this video and you just like what I'm putting out, subscribe. It's completely free, and it's probably the best way you can support me. Now, our next planet's named JG1132b. The most important thing I need to tell you right now is that it's actually a rocky planet. So yes, you can actually land on the surface. And even better, it's only a little bit larger than our own Earth. Plus, it has an atmosphere. Over the lifespan of its existence, it's actually had two different atmospheres. Its first atmosphere was just made out of simple hydrogen and helium. But that was until its own star stripped away its atmosphere. And that left it with no protection from anything in space, including meteoroids. You're probably wondering how it got its second atmosphere. So for a brief explanation, this planet has a lot of volcanic activity on it. And I mean a lot. And those volcanoes with their magma brought up a ton of different materials from the inner core of the planet. Surface rover honesty is relaying data. Volcanic lava plumes detected. Checking gaseous elements. Sensories, hydrogen, methane, and cyanide. Conclusion. Planet may be inhospitable to human activity due to deadly toxins in atmosphere. Which, if you can't tell, is a super deadly mix. That might smell a lot like almonds, possibly. Now, PSR B1257 plus 12B, or what's otherwise known as Poltergeist, is another terrestrial planet. But this time, it's around four times the size of Earth. But why is it called Poltergeist? Well, that's actually because the star it orbits around is undead. Its star, named Lich, is known as a pulsar star. And basically, it's a star that's condensed itself into a neutron star. Which basically means that it used to be a huge star, but then it condensed itself down into this super small and tiny little star. But the scary thing about pulsar stars is that it releases super high energy cosmic rays out of its own electromagnetic pole. A good way to imagine it is if there were two giant Death Star lasers shooting out exactly where Santa's workshop is in real life and where they filmed Happy Feet. So if you landed there, you'd basically be fried within minutes. Optimal altitude reached. Launch sequence started. Rover endurance reading all green. Landing thruster radiation levels higher than expected. 
critical system ceiling. But hey, the one cool thing about it is that if you ever look at planets that have been hit by those ultra high energy cosmic rays, they actually look super colorful. Pluto's a really great example. Now, our last travel destination is GJ504B. It's another gas giant that sits around 4.65 million miles away from its sun, which in most cases means that the entire planet would just be shrouded in darkness and we wouldn't know what it looked like. But the weirdest thing about this planet is that it glows and it glows pink. But how can it? Well, the most available explanation I could find was not because of something it was made of or whatever it was in it, but because it's so freaking hot. Now earlier I said it was slightly larger than Jupiter, and that's correct, but I didn't say its mass, which is around 4 Jupiters worth. That's like if you had a foam block in your left hand and then a tungsten block in your right hand. They're both the same size, but if you drop a tungsten block on anything, it's gonna destroy whatever's underneath it. But you gotta remember, this planet is constantly exposed to the freezing cold temperatures of space. But despite that, because of its size and its density, it creates an insane amount of internal heat, which eventually, after a long journey, radiates out, but it's still hot enough to bake a pumpkin pie. And another thing, it's also around 1.6 million years old, which is actually a lot younger than our own Earth. So two large objects, huge, collided which created a ton of heat and basically all of that heat just stayed inside and it was so hot it made everything around it glow